This is the story of Alexis Ware, age 29, a mother of two who disappeared while meeting the father of her youngest child never to be seen again. She told her mother and friend she might not live to see her 30th birthday few days to her disappearance and that was what happened to her in reality. Her previous partner, present partner and her best friend were all said to be somehow related to her disappearance but they were quick to come online to debunk all rumors about their involvement. I ain't had nothing to do with nothing. Period. If, the, if I had anything to do with it, shit, bro, them people that bitch snatch me, bro. I'm on an anchor monster, bro. Stop bashing my damn name, bro. I ain't got nothing to do with nothing. This case is a real mystery that even the FBI found it hard to solve. What really happened to Alexis Ware? Hello and welcome to Twisted Crimes. Subscribe and hit the like button for more stories. Family members and activists are pushing for more help in the search for a missing South Carolina mother of two. This story will be taking us to Greenville, South Carolina. Greenville is located on the Interstate 85 corridor, approximately halfway between Atlanta and Charlotte. Considered to be a nice small city with friendly and outgoing people, Greenville has recently landed on the radar of a lot of individuals considering making a move. Alexis Ware, age 29, was from Greenville, South Carolina. She had two beautiful kids. She was known to be a hardworking, loving and caring woman. She loved her kids and did all she could to provide for them. She was kind of popular in the area of Greenville, South Carolina. She is outgoing and loved to spend times with friends. Alexis had a child by a man named Sosa, who she broke up with when things didn't work out with them no more, they were cordial because they had a child together. That was the father of her first child. Following the breakup, Alexis had a man slide in her DM named TJ Patterson, from there on, it was like a match made in heaven. They clicked and started a very serious relationship between them. They showed each other affection online, Alexis was always posting what he meant to her. She could not hold those messages back. Soon enough after the started dating, she found out that she was pregnant and was going to be having a second child. She posted about it on social media. They were expecting twins. In most of her posts, she felt really happy and no one ever thought otherwise about their relationship. At a point during the pregnancy, they discovered that they lost one of their babies. He posted how he felt about the loss online saying, this feeling I can't shake or hide sitting in the doctor's office waiting to hear both of the twins heartbeat in the doctors tells you I'm sorry but I can't find the other one heartbeat boy went all over me. After the baby was born, TJ was said to be a great father and lover, he can be seen with the baby on multiple occasion also seen with Alexis in some lovey-dovey pictures. He was described as a very good person by everyone who was around them. But as we would find out, things started going south and Alexis won't hold back on social media, she posted those messages on social media too. They tried to stay together but they eventually broke up. This is where things started getting interesting and where most of the facts are not totally known. Alexis's mother Alberta was very close to her child, according to her, they speak every day and she tells her everything. Alexis would call her occasionally to tell her that there is someone she refers to as the devil who calls her every time to say bad things to her, also she mentioned whenever she drives around there is someone driving a black truck following her. She went further to tell her mother that she does not believe she would live to see her 30th birthday which was in two months time. All the strange things would end up being critical in her disappearance. On January 29, 2022, Alexis Ware spent the weekend with family at her mother's house, located about 80 miles away from her home in Greenville, South Carolina. Around noon on January 30, 2022, Alexis left her mother's house and returned home to Greenville. Sometimes during the same day, Alexis made plans to go drop the kid with TJ, the father of her two-year-old son, around 7.30 p.m. at a gas station off Highway 29 in Anderson, South Carolina, which was about 40 miles from her home. In a surveillance footage that the police got at the exchange point, there was no form of struggle or any kind of force, they both got out of the car and made the exchange then Alexis who was supposed to follow Patterson to his mother's house before heading back to her own mother's house, 
but she drove around his car at a red light at some point and sped off into the night which would be the last time anyone will ever see her alive. On February 1, 2022, her family filed a missing persons report with the Anderson County Sheriff's Office when they couldn't contact her. Alexis's red 2019 Honda Accord was found abandoned on February 2 along a dirt road in a heavily wooded area in McCormick County, about an hour's drive from that Anderson apartment complex. A black hair bonnet that Alexis had been wearing that night was found near the vehicle. Her cell phone, purse, and a bag of clothes had also been left inside the vehicle. The police department did all what they could do to locate her but to no avail, they also got help from the FBI but still no luck in finding her. Family members and activists are pushing for more help in the search for a missing South Carolina mother of two. Alexis Ware was last seen three weeks ago on January 30th in Anderson County. Her red Honda car was later found on a rural property in McCormick County, but Ware has still not been found. Investigators do not know how the car ended up there. Activists have requested the FBI's help, but the agency released a statement to our sister station in Greenville saying law enforcement has not asked for their help. Anyone with information is asked to call the Anderson County Sheriff's Office. When nothing worked, they paid to get a big billboard out there so they can reach out to the whole community. There is a $5,000 reward for anyone providing information leading to an arrest or finding Alexis. Update an unstable woman's family hopes a new billboard will lead to their the answers they want. She disappeared five months ago in Anderson County. 7 News reporter Asia Wilson has more on the efforts to bring the woman home. Alexis Rare has been missing since January 30th. Since then, there have been multiple searches, but she still hasn't been found. That's why family and friends put up this billboard. The name of the one who calls Heads out. bowed, candles burning, and music playing. Family and friends of Alexis Rare still leaning on faith. Prayer and faith. Faith in God that she's okay. In hopes of finding the missing woman. You know, it's been five months, and she's still missing. And we just want her home. Where was last seen on January 30th, leaving the 7-Eleven gas station in Anderson on Highway 29 North. She is a mom. She is a daughter. Her kids miss her. They need her. Her mother misses her. We all miss her. Where's family says she was there dropping off her children with her child's father. And then she sped off in her red Honda. They haven't heard from her since. You know, I miss her. I, I pick up the phone sometime and I, you know, I think about the phone calls that we share daily throughout the day, all day. I talk to my baby all day. And after her 30th birthday has passed and many searches later. Let's, if you can hear us, we love you. We miss you. We will never stop looking for you. Weir's family hopes a new billboard along Woodruff Road donated by the Black and Missing Foundation will be a new sign of hope. Putting it out there is it's giving me that hope. It's giving, you know, something for me to hold on to. And be a shining bright light that leads them to answers that finally bring their Lexus back home. Can somebody know something and we just want to keep, you know, the, the light shining. Rumors started floating around town that both father of her kids knew about her disappearance due to one reason or the other. Sosa, the first father of her child was said to have wasted no time taking the news report going down and terminating the child support, the mom stated that TJ stated he gave her a hug but it didn't show on the footage. They both took their time to go online to explain their side of the stories. Everybody trying to say, well she said this about you on Facebook, she said that about, about you on Facebook. You got to think about it. When her and TJ fell out, like she, she went on there and said the same thing about him because she know people out here love a certain way. So she going to try to defame their character to keep the, 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 the have people mad at them as well. Oh, I, don't, I'm not, I don't care. I don't. What if you do with this is whatever you do with it. You know, I don't care about that. I don't I don't care about that. I don't care what a person do for him. Now, I don't, I don't think I'm caring about trying to find legs. Y'all out there slandering my name. Saying I'm a suspect, all this, I done heard everything in the brook, man. I'm talking about, I y'all done nailed me to the cross. Y'all got me messed up, bro. I'm not one of them. But check it though. So, I'm gonna run this thing all the way back before Lex went missing. You feel me? All right. For one, me and Lex been separated. You feel me? I left Lex. Lex didn't leave me. You feel me? So, boom. I left off and up there around about, what, October? 
You know what I'm saying? I ain't been out there, been back up there not one time. You feel me? Not one time. So, boom, god dang on. Before Lex took this, her being missing, Lex was, I don't I don't know, she was dealing with some kind of spiritual root shit. I don't, I don't know what was going on. She would just been talking out outside her head. You know what I'm saying? So, Tuesday night, 1.30 in the morning, she called me out my, she called, wake me up, talking about some TJ. She say, uh, I know you sleep. I know you got to work in the, uh, in the morning. I know you sleep. I know you got to work in the, uh, in the morning. She said, but um, let me tell you something right quick. I'm like, what you talking about? Let, what's up? She talking about some, um, well, my last five exes within the last seven years, they died. Huh? What you talking about? She said, I wish death upon them. I said, bro, you is tripping. You know what I'm saying? You need help, man. Get off my phone. You talking crazy. I hung up. She started sending me all type of pictures of a lady bull crawling on the ceiling, what the meanings of it, her Pisces sign, all type of weird talk. You know what I'm saying? So, around later on in the week, she thinks she's, y'all seen all the posts that she was making, talking about she won the lottery, hit the lottery and all. So, she done spending that, spending that in Augusta, that the lottery place with the kids in the car, all that. Yeah, they ain't telling all that. I'm going to keep that gutter, nigga. I'm tired of this shit. Y'all is a suspect. Why y'all why why y'all ain't got they ain't gonna question him? Why they ain't question? I'm trapped everywhere I go. Everywhere I go, I'm trapped. A woman can't make me do nothing. It's too many out there. It's too many out there. Don't get it twisted. I mean I left Lex. Lex didn't leave me. I'm not no tender dick. You feel me? No tender dick. I, I feel like I can get any woman in the world. So like all, all that. Just cause y'all niggas like them obsessed with her and all that, I'm, I wasn't one of them. I wasn't one of them. Yes, go ahead and tell when I was locked up during my time. What about that dude Lex was messing with, having a foul with? What about that? Ain't nobody speaking on that, is it? Yes, who was obsessed with her? Y'all seen the messages? She sent me the message. Tell, tell me, don't send it out. Don't send it out, to nobody. Don't know. Bashing my name, I'm sending everybody I know. You know what I'm saying? Come on, bro. She know whatever Let's had got going on, bro. Also, there was a lady who was said to be close to her who she decided to give everything she owned few days before her disappearance. People felt it was weird she would have given this lady everything, including her car, salon equipment, home gadget, etc. She tried clearing the air, but some people still don't believe her. Lex was my mentor. Lex called me. They can fact check this. Y'all can fact check. I want to fact check. Lex called me Saturday and said, you can have my car. You can have the keys to my house. I'm going to give you everything. I said, Lex, why are you doing this? She said, because I love you and I want you to have a fresh start. I want you, I want you to have something. I want you to have more than what you have now. You can have everything in my apartment and the things that you can't use or the things that you don't want, you can sell them. I got messages of me texting her saying, damn bro, like, I love you, you feel me? Like, I really appreciate it. Lex told me, come to this, the address that y'all are talking about that I sent her, she sent me an address. So I don't know what her brother talking about. She sent me an address. Jaquisha can vouch. Lex told me to come get She sent me the address. She said, I want you to come up here Tuesday morning. This was Saturday when she takes me the address. She said, I want you to come up here Tuesday morning. I said, okay. So I talked to Lex Sunday. She called me and she woke me up out my sleep. She called me and she woke me up out my sleep. She said, and her mother was right beside her for the whole, for the whole conversation when she was telling me that she was giving me her car and she was giving me the keys to her apartment. Her mother was right there. there was also the story of her seeing a married man after breaking up with TJ who did not allow the police to search his house when asked. No one knows how true this is. One year later her family has not given up looking for her, they keep pleading to the public to help in finding their loved one. TJ would eventually be ruled out as a suspect in the case. Police found no evidence, means or motive for foul play in Alexis's disappearance. Only on facts, an update on a case we've been following since a mom of two disappeared about a year ago. This is Alexis Ware. She went missing from Anderson January 30th. And today we are learning from investigators somebody in Alexis Ware's close inner circle has been ruled out as a suspect. 
It's a big development. We could tell you it is someone deputies have been talking with throughout the investigation, and they can now say this person is not involved in her disappearance. Fox Carolina's Brooklyn Cromer talks with her family. Monday marks one year since Alexis Ware vanished from her apartment here in Greenville. Though the FBI has been brought in, her family wants more eyes on the case. On Monday, they're going to the Attorney General's office in Columbia, asking for help with the investigation. After leaving her apartment in Greenville and driving to Anderson, less than an hour later, Alexis was last seen pulling out of the 7-Eleven on Highway 29 North. Since then, her red Honda was found by deputies in McCormick County near the Georgia state line. Her personal belongings, including two cell phones, found inside the car. Though ground searches of the area found no signs of the missing 29-year-old mom. Her son's father tells Ware's mom that Alexis dropped off her two kids, then sped away from the gas station. Her mom talking to her just hours before she went missing and says one of their last conversations still haunts her. Alexis tells her someone in a black truck had been following her for several weeks and she was afraid. Alexis's mom says more needs to be done to help find her daughter. A year has passed um, and nothing has changed from the first day of her disappearance. And um, We're just hoping for some closure. We pray for closure. Uh, we need answers. Her children need answers. I have to deal with the fact that her daughter lay down and, and cry for her mom. We decided to go to um, the attorney general office requesting that they step in and take over the case because it's been a year. We, we've decided that it should be fresh eyes on this. Um, I don't think what should have been done is being done. I, I need answers. We need answers. The case is currently active and ongoing. The circumstances of Alexis Ware's disappearance remain unclear and her case is currently classified as missing. Her case remains unsolved. Alexis is five feet, 5 inches tall and weighs 230 pounds. If anyone has any information regarding the disappearance of Alexis Ware, or has any information about her whereabouts, you are asked to contact the Anderson County Sheriff's Office at 864-260-4405, or you may submit information through Crimestoppers at 1-888, Crime, SC, 274 -6372. We do hope something positive comes out of this case at the end of the day even though it's over a year at the time of making this video. Please stay safe and see you guys in the next video.